And hi, everyone. So we probably can start for today's uh, topic. So in today's uh, meeting, I want to present uh, basically the called the distribution transaction. So based on me is my colleague, and I I'm from I'm Eddie Ran, and this is from Ming Tai, and uh, we from Cisco. <clears throat> so we wanted to present what is the distribution transaction we want to add uh, in the the audio the, the framework. This is more like a small enhancement in the audio as a framework. <clears throat> so. Why, uh, what kind of functionality we want to add? So when the first time uh, when I, uh, I have my own like audio project, so I, what do I, I want to do is basically I want to use the audio as a platform to uh, manage a set of the white boxes. So it's a bunch of a small box, could be like a virtual, could be physical, those are the small boxes in the network. But I want to use audio to manage it. So once I manage it, I want to like uh, say use it on top, there will be the a virtual router to to looking at the route on, to managing this network as a router instead of managing each in different boxes. So then in that case, so you, when you, the customer config, it will be configured the network, instead of configure the network, he will configure as a the top overlay network in the router. But once he configure the router, I need converting those configurations through the ODO to different devices. So then it could, that means that, say, for example, I configure the um, layer 3 VPN that uh, on the top uh, virtual router, which is uh, peering with the uh, external guys. Then go through the ODO, he thinking this is more like, say, say the service's uh, intent, which kind of similar to the grant the idea. So this is the intent. But then we need to convert into the devices. I could say, for example, I have uh, like uh, 10 devices which are on the underlay, which need to be programming this one. It could be go to Netcom, could be something else. So, but the question right now, when the problem I'm facing is like, say, how do I provision it? Right now in the Netcom, when we pro program it, we program one by one. In the normal case, it should be okay. But once the error happens, then application need to be aware to say, okay, I need to roll back. Say, for example, I have like a one, two, three success. Fourth one failed. That which means that I need to roll back two and three as well. That's that what we call the atomic, means that the operation need to be done, either all success or zero be put on the network. So that's the one thing we want to do. It's like, that's what we call the network level transaction. So either all success or all fail. So it cannot be leave something in the middle. Because if we don't have that one, so which means at the end of the application need to do all this by themselves. So if you have like a one, two, three success, a fourth fail, then you need to, okay, I need to roll back three, four, two, and one. But if I have like a fifth success, then which means you need to roll back a four, three, two, one. So it's kind of like say each application do it by its own. So right now we want to introduce this as infrastructure to doing it. Then the second one is the isolation, so which means that um, once I start to configure these devices, which means it's kind of like the ind each individual, when you do the netconf, you have the lock. When you get a transaction, you have the lock. This is one thing, if I want to program in these eight devices or 10 devices, I also need to grab the lock to make sure that no other people can are touching these 10 devices. You don't want like two brains, so which means one guy uh, getting the uh, updating the one part of the config, the other guy simultaneously uh, update the other part of the config. That will be uh, cause a problem. That's why we call it isolation. So the main thing is very simple. The two functionality we want to achieve from the network wising. One is the atomic, one is the isolation. Basically say, I want to make sure that I could really treat the network as one entity or one device when we're programming it, instead of like say, handling 10 devices differently. So from the requirement point of view, so one is compatible. So we need to, so if you're looking on the current DL like, um, Let's say framework, you see that you have NetConf with data broker, and you have the normal data broker, and you could have other the ping pong data broker, a bunch of different data brokers. So we could allow the different data brokers to get involved. And that means, say, for example, within one transaction, say, for example, you want to programming device with NetConf, and you also want to store some internal data in your data store in the ODO, you can consider this as one transaction. Either one of them fail, you could like say roll back, 
cleanly. So this is basically say I generalizing that to say making this as a data broker. So I using the data broker uh, to, to uh, consider. So it could be netconf or it could be devices or it could be like a different. The second one is like auto rollback. We don't want to like say if something happened failed, we the infra will be rolled back to the previous state. So which means that if uh, whenever you say I start the transaction. When you, end, when you end the transaction, either it failed. If it failed, then I need to go back to where we're starting. We don't leave any intermediate state in between. So that's the purpose for that. Then the third one is the locking. So basically say, once we start the, the, the transaction, we need to lock in the device. So basically, the main purpose is that we don't want other the things can happen simultaneously. So, so this is more like a, uh, so basically from application point of view, I have the one lock within this set of device and internally I need to maintain the different locks to locking them. So these are the contributors. So the, uh, the Maros is basically say the who own the NetConf, so he uh, give a lot of uh, contribution on here. Then Fami and I were basically from the project which we are working on, so we are working on the, Also we have two interns from the the um, BUBT, which is in the China. So they kind of like helping on this one. So contributed the unit test and the IT test. So this project, I see that is a very good contribution among the, all the different resources. Okay, so I'll give the, the, the presentation to the me and let him to go through the detail to say how we achieve it. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Heidi. Hi, everyone. So now I'm going, uh, I'm going to um, go through the uh, internal design and some implement, uh, imp implementation details. So this is the architecture of uh, distributed transactions. Distributed transactions we shorted for uh, DTX. So um, f from the application point of view, so DTX is a, uh, is a library. So uh, application can uh, use the APIs provide, uh, provided by DTX. So, and the DTX utilize the uh, APIs provided by the specific data brokers. So in, uh, in the current implementations, we have two data brokers supported. One is, one is NetConf data broker, so, and the, the other one is the data store data broker. So uh, first, the, in, this, in this paragraph, to the uh, uh, upper left corner, so application use the uh, DTX provider to get uh, DTX uh, D, uh, DTX transaction. So DTX provider actually is a, a service instance running in ODL. So basically application need to wear the service in so uh, the application can get, can get the uh, DTX, uh, can access the, can, can get the distributed transaction uh, instance. So once the application pass, uh, get the service, so it, um, the provider will lock all the devices that the, the application will operate on. So this, uh, as, uh, this is because the transactions are exclusive. So um, in, the, in the right hand side, there are two blocks. One is called cache. So the, uh, the cache, uh, in DTX, the, the reason why we can keep the transaction atomic is so before uh, each operation. So um, for, uh, for each operation, we will uh, read the data first. So suppose you have some data to operate on, either uh, uh, either, de uh, either write or delete. So first we will read the data from, the, from your device and save the data in your cache. So and the, if there are some, if there are some, there are some error happens and the data, so the data saved in the cache will be rolled back to, to the previous state. It means the cache data will be uh, read to the device again. So um, the data is, uh, the cache is per transaction, so means uh, it means that the, for different transactions, they won't be they, they won't uh, interrupt each other. So and the, the rollback component so uh, is for the uh, error handling. Suppose you have uh, 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 some operations in one transaction, but one of them fail. So at this time, the rollback will happen. So rollback the rollback component will um, get all the data from the cache and uh, write all the data back to the devices. So, and uh, of course, in you know, a reverse order. The, the reason is, you know, so for some data, there are some dependencies between, between your data. So like uh, you, have some, uh, you have two configurations, so you have to first write to A and then write to B. 
So, but and the folder, if there are some error happens, so we want to roll back data. The sequence should be reverse B first, and then uh, uh, and reverse A. So, uh, and uh, uh, at the southbound, there are two TX providers. One is called the Netcom TX provider, and uh, the other one is called the uh, uh, Data Store TX provider. So uh, this, uh, these two transaction providers actually it's an abstract layer for uh, different data brokers. So because the problem is, so we, we want to support uh, multiple data brokers in future. So we have to uh, provide abstract layer to abstract uh, the uh, to abstract the uh, the behaviors of different different data brokers. So currently we support two uh, trans transaction data um, providers, and uh, they are NetConf provider and uh, data store providers. Uh, so in one transaction, there are uh, several, uh, there are uh, different kind of failures. So basically, uh, first we, uh, because in the transaction, first we can read data from the uh, from device. Uh, the the first error may be the uh, read error. The read error may uh, caused by uh, some um, the absence of the device or some ne network connectivity errors or something like that. So this the first error is the uh, read error. Uh, second error, maybe there are some. Uh, uh, there are some. Maybe suppose we are going to write a data to a device, and at this time the write may uh, there maybe there are some error happen for your for your write. Uh, the write maybe you have some invalid argument, or some the the device doesn't exist or something like that. So basically, for for one operation, so a lot of places may give you any uh, a lot of errors, different errors, but uh, any of these error will be thought. Uh, Will be treated as an error of the op operation. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Oh, okay. So his question is whether the ro rollback is guaranteed or not. So whether the uh, rollback is, uh, happens automatically. The answer is yes. So the the reason is you know so suppose there uh, in our implementation once there is uh, once there is an error so the uh, the rollback will roll back all the operations you have performed in the in the transaction. Of course in a reverse order. Okay. So uh, he, here is the uh, sequence to create a new transaction. So uh, application how how application should use the, the this library? So it's quite similar to uh, to the APIs to use uh, use a data broker. So first, application should uh, uh, create a new transaction, and then uh, application should uh, use the uh, put, merge, delete APIs to operate on the uh, on, the, on a specific device. And then after the operations, uh, application should uh, should uh, should, uh, should, call, should call submit function to submit all the operations that have been performed. So uh, the, uh, this is a sequence diagram to create a new transaction. So for to create a to create a new transaction, so application has to pass all the devices that the, the application is going to operate on to DTX, uh, uh, more accurately to DTX provider. So application passes all the uh, passes all the uh, devices to operate on to DX, DTX provider. So uh, in the first step, so uh, th uh, this API is a, uh, is a synchronous API. So. Uh, the TX provider first will log all the devices. So this is because the transactions are exclusive. So uh, after logging the devices, the uh, TX, uh, DTX provider will go to uh, each uh, TX uh, transaction providers. So uh, like uh, uh, we have NetConf data brokers, we have data store data brokers. So uh, the DTX provider will get the real uh, um, right transaction from these two data brokers. And all data, all uh, all these transactions will be saved in DTX, so and saved in the dispute transaction handle, and the return the uh, return the dispute transaction instance to to the application. So uh, after after one point three, so it means the DTX provider returned a, a transaction to to DTX provider. Maybe there are some some error happens, so uh, which which wasn't shown in the in the in the, the diagram. Suppose there are suppose DTX provider fails to get a transaction from from a specific provider, 
of course, the the, uh, the creation of your new transaction uh, fails, and uh, at this time, the, the DTX provider will release all the devices and release all the logs and return error to applications. So uh, here is another example to to show how to uh, um, how to do device operations. So uh, after uh, after applications create a new transaction, so uh, device device can operate on the uh, on those devices. Uh, first, uh, the device operation APIs they are all asynchronous. So application first uh, uh, issue put merge or delete operation to a device, and uh, of course uh, to a, to a specific data broker too, and. Uh, DTX will return a future to the application immediately. So uh, the, the API is asynchronous. The, uh, then DTX will uh, read the data. Read the data the, the operation is going to operate on. So and uh, read the data from, from data broker. So after the data broker, so after the read, the data broker will issue the real read to a device. This, this may, be, uh, may be a read from a device or read from a database. So the the data will be read from the data broker and will be returned to the to the DTX, and then DTX will cache the data in, in your local cache. So after so uh, at this point, so the data so you are going to operate on uh, is saved in your, in your local cache. So and then DTX will uh, issue the real put, delete or merge to to the device. So at this phase, the real write to device happens. And the, uh, after 1.5, so the data broker will read, uh, write the real data to, to a device or to a, to a database. And this, this, is, this is where the uh, real uh, programming happens. Uh, after the, after uh, DTS get the uh, result of the real, uh, real write, so it will save the, uh, it will set the result in the future. So which was returned to to the to the application. So in one point seven. So after one point seven, so application can you know, will be notified so uh, for the task because the task is done. So either uh, this 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 is a successful case to uh, f for for device operation in you know transaction. So I will talk about the if there are some uh, some error happens, how DTX will deal with the will deal with the errors. So, any questions on this slide? Oh, okay. Suppose there are some some error happens in your transaction. So, uh, at this time, so the DTX will roll back all the data that has been performed, or roll back all the data has that has have been um, written to devices. So, same thing. So, suppose applications still use your write to DTX. So uh, DTX first read the data from from device and uh, uh, save the data in a uh, in a cache. So because there are there are uh, many errors may happen in the uh, procedure. So uh, let's take the real write error for example, and then uh, uh, the DTX will write the data to to a device. At this time, the error may happen. So the error happens, and uh, in one point six. And the device returns some errors, or returns return some error to DTX. DTX captured the error. So at this time, so D, uh, DTX will roll back all the data that have, has been performed. So it means basically what the DTX uh, do, uh, does is to read all the data from the cache, the cache in uh, the cache in 1.4, the step 1.4, and all the cache will be uh, read from the cache. And uh, write to the to the data brokers, so the data in the cache will be write uh, will be uh, write into the data brokers in a reverse order. So by uh, by this way, so DTX can uh, DTX will um, get the data before the transaction before the transaction happens, and write the data before the transaction happens to to the devices. So the all the uh, all your uh, operations will be uh, can be rolled back. So and then in this case, so DTX will set an error 
to the future, which, which was returned to the two applications, and the applications will uh, will get will will get the notif notification of an error for 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 its operations. So. Uh, as I have said, so there are several steps to finish a transaction. First, the creation of cre uh, creation of transaction, and then the device operations, and finally, so applicants should uh, submit all the uh, to applicants should do submission to submit all the operations that has been performed. So uh, there are there there may be some errors for the uh, submit uh, uh, during the submission too. So um, this sequence diagram shows what will what will we do. So if there are some errors uh, during during submission. So uh, first application uh, is your submit to DTX. Uh, DTX will return a future to application immediately. So this fu uh, this function call is also asynchronous. Uh, after DTX get the submission request, DTX will submit uh, to all all the devices and uh, all the data brokers. So it means the submission is uh, uh, is uh, is parallel uh, executed. So uh, and the DTS will wait for the uh, each data broker and its its device for for the return value of the submission. So suppose there is no errors, uh, one point three will go to one point six, and uh, uh, a good result will a uh, okay result will be returned to the to the application. But uh, at this time. So suppose there are some submission submission error, like maybe you have some configuration collision, so on on one of the device, so and uh, you may get a, a submission failure. At this time, so uh, DTX will capture the uh, the submission failure, and uh, similarly, DTX will also roll back all the data that that that's been, that has been performed, no matter the submission happens or not. So uh, and also the uh, roll back the data sequences uh, is, is in a reversed order. So uh, this figure, uh, this diagram briefly describes the uh, class diagrams in, in DTX implementation. So in the middle, we can see uh, DTX. Uh, DTX, uh, DTX is an interface. So similar as the. Uh, uh, read the uh, similar as it's a, set, a subtype of uh, write transactions. So there are uh, there are three uh, there are four major uh, methods in write transactions. They are basically they are put, uh, merge, delete, and uh, submit. So we we are still using the submit uh, method. The problem is for the first three put, merge, and uh, push, mode, uh, put, merge, and delete. So the the problem is their return value is void. But for DTX, so or DTX uh, write APIs, they are all asynchronous. Maybe there are, uh, and there are a lot of uh, different scenarios, different errors may happen during the uh, in the programming. So uh, in this case, we uh, create another three new APIs called put and rollback upon failure, delete and uh, rollback upon, upon failure, and merge and rollback upon failure. So these are three new API asynchronous APIs for DTX. Uh, DTX uh, and the DTX imp implementation is a, a class uh, which in implements uh, the DTX interface. So on the on the left hand, so there are two libraries. One is called the uh, rollback library. The other one is called the uh, TX cache. The TX uh, this, these two uh, are implemented in the uh, in the SPI of DTX. So the first uh, rollback is for the uh, control logic to rollback. Uh, Rollback data from uh, from, uh, from 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 devices, and the TS cache is the implementation for the cache to cache the data read from devices. So on the on the on the uh, right hand, there are two uh, two blocks. One is called the TX provider, and the, the the other one is called the TX, uh, DTX provider. DTX provider is a uh, it's a service running in ODL instance. So application use this uh, TX provider to uh, initialize a transaction uh, to initialize a distributed transaction, uh, and in the TX provider, TX provider is a uh, is also interface. So this abstract layer for different data brokers. So we have two data broker implemented now. They are data uh, data store TX um, TX provider and the netconf TX provider. 
So DTX, pro, uh, DTX provider will link these two transaction providers and ut utilize the, the service from these two, um, two transaction providers. Um, and everything finally was uh, integrated into DTX imp implementation. So um, it's, and the DTX implementation is the, uh, implements all the control logic and uh, uh, all the control log is logic of DTX. Um, and uh, those control logs, uh, we have, I think we have covered most of the uh, sequence uh, yeah, in previous slides. So uh, for about the, uh, about the future work, so uh, currently the, the cache, we, ha uh, we implemented the uh, in-memory cache. The problem is, so for the in-memory cache, there are, uh, there may be, suppose the uh, uh, ODR instance crashed, so we cannot get the, uh, the, uh, the cache data back. So in future, we are planning to implement persistent data cache so the 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 idea is maybe we may put the cache in the uh, in the data store. So because the data store itself is persistent, so if we put the data store, so even though after after the ODR crash, so we still can data store back and the the operation the transaction can still go on. So another future work is the uh, the locks. So for the lock, because the Transac uh, transactions are exclusive, so means we have to. Uh, maybe there are some. If there are some uh, bugs in applications, so maybe a device may may be locked for error. So in this case, we need to have something to uh, recover. So our plan. Our plan was to uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, to put a timer in the uh, implementation in the in the dispute transaction. So if the uh, time up timeout triggers, so the device will be, the device lock will be uh, released, released un unconditionally. So this will uh, help uh, uh, for the case that application crash and the, uh, the, the device will be, uh, won't be locked forever. So another, another future work is the, uh, the device locks. Currently, the lock was in, uh, implemented in DTX, but the problem is for, uh, for for different data brokers, their locking mecha mecha mechanisms are different. So in future, we we are going to move the lock implementation into each data broker, so we can uh, we can have the very uh, pro uh, data broker specific locks. So uh, I think we still have some time. We can still talk. I can still talk about the uh, current uh, state of the project and the uh, release plan of the project. So the current project, we have finished most of the testing, uh, the coding of the the the, 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 the project itself, and the most the testing, including the unit test and the integration test. So we have, we are working on some performance test, uh, performance test. So um, I think maybe uh, in short future, maybe in 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 a couple of weeks, we can get the performance test of the uh, th this feature. And uh, also, so the, for the release plan of the feature, I think uh, uh, the the feature will be released in um, Boron, which will uh, which will happen very soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any questions and comments? Uh, so the, the the question is when you re, uh, when DTX read the data from device, so what's the data format or what's the data type from the from device? Is that right? What's the content? Okay. So um, um, actually, so in DTX doesn't care what what kind of uh, what what type or what content of data you read from device. So because in the data broker you pass the uh, instance identifier to to uh, to device to to DTX. So DTX just the read the instance identifier from a data broker, and the data type in the in the cache because the final data read from the device will be stored in a in, in a cache. So the the data in DTX they are all in has a type of d, uh, data object, so it means it's a, a generic object rather than a specific type. 
So basically, so for this question, because DTX uh, infrastructure, so means the DTX has to um, so compat has to be compatible to different data brokers. So DTX doesn't doesn't uh, handle the uh, specific type of data. It only handles the uh, generic type of data. The the question is so whether we cache suppose we read some data whether we cache all the data from the device, so the answer is yes. So uh, still go back to the same uh, um, same claim I, have, I made before. So, so once you are uh, accessing a data, so means you access on an instance identifier. So in the data broker, so all the data is in with stored in a tree structure. So suppose you are reading a reading a node in a tree structure, you also read all the uh, all the data from your subtree. So in the, at this time, so the data itself and the, all the subtree will be saved in the cache. So and of course all the all the configuration. So uh, take your example. So all the configuration from a device that read to DTX will be saved in the local cache. So only by this way, uh, if there are some error happens, we can roll back the data to the previous state. Uh, any more questions? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much. That's our presentation. Thanks for coming. Um, either all success or zero be put on the network. So that's the one thing we want to do. It's like that's what we call the network level transaction. So either all success or all fail. So it cannot be leave something in the middle. Because if we don't have that one, so which means at the end of the application need to uh, do all this by themselves. So if you have like a one, two, three success, fourth fail, then you need to, okay, I need to roll back three, four, two, and one. But if I have like a fifth success, then which means you need to roll back four, three, two, one. So it's kind of like say each application do it by its own. So right now we want to introduce this as infrastructure to doing it. Then the second one is the isolation, so which means that um, once I start to configure these devices, which means it's kind of like the in the each individual, when you do the net convert, you have the lock. When you get the transaction, you have the lock. This is one thing if I... And hi, everyone. So we probably can start for today's uh, topic. So in... Today's uh, meeting, I want to present uh, basically the called the distribution transaction. So basically, Fang Ming is my colleague, and I I'm from I'm Eddie Ran, and this is Fang Ming Tai, and uh, we from Cisco. <clears throat> so we wanted to present what is the distribution transaction we want to add uh, in the the audio the the framework. This is more like a small enhancement in the audio as a framework. <clears throat> so. Why, uh, what kind of functionality we want to add? So when the first time uh, when I, uh, I have my own like audio project, so I, what do I, I want to do is basically I want to use in the audio as a platform to uh, manage a set of the white boxes. So it's a bunch of a small boxes, could be like a virtual, could be physical, those are the small boxes in the network. But I want to use audio to manage it. So once I manage it, I want to like uh, say use it on top, there will be the a virtual router to to looking at the route uh, to managing this network as a router instead of managing each in different boxes. So then in that case, so you, when you, the customer config, it will be configured the instead of configure the network, he'll configure as a the top overlay network in the router. But once he configure the router, I need converting those configurations through the ODO to different devices. So then it could, that means that, say, for example, I configure the uh, layer 3 VPN that uh, on the top uh, virtual router, which is uh, peering with the external guys. Then go through the ODO, he thinking this is more like, say, say the service's uh, intent, which is kind of similar to the grant the idea. So this is the intent. But then we need to convert into the devices. I could say, for example, I have uh, like uh, 10 devices uh, which are on the underlay, which need to be programming this one. It could be go through Netcom, could be something else. So, but the question right now, when the problem I'm facing is like, say, how do I provision it? Right now in the Netcom, when we pro program it, we program one by one. In the normal case, it should be okay. But uh, once the error happens, then application need to be aware to say, okay, I need to roll back. 
Say, for example, I have like a one, two, three success. Fourth one failed. That which means that I need to roll back two and three as well. That, that's what we call the atomic means that the operation need to be done around programming these eight devices or ten devices. I also need to grab the lock to make sure that no other people can are touching these ten devices. You don't want like two brains, so which means one guy uh, getting the, uh, updating the one part of the config, the other guy simultaneously update the other part of the config. That will be uh, cause a problem. That's why we call it isolation. So the main thing is very simple. The two functionality we want to achieve from the network wising. One is an atomic, one is isolation. Basically say, I want to make sure that I could really treat the network as one entity or one device when we're programming it, instead of like say, handling 10 devices differently. So from the requirement point of view, so one is a compatible, so we need to, so if you're looking on the current DL like a, let's say, 